Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today I was hoping to do a carving video for you, but it has been raining out like nonstop. I decided to put together a video of a homemade tool that I've just recently started using to uh, take the burn off the bear. So you torch your bears for chainsaw carving and you end up having this soot or black ash on the outside. Now, a lot of times I use a brush like this, right? using your arms and you're scrubbing away recently i started making something like this and if you guys want to see more about it be sure to stick around and see this video to the end thanks like i was just showing you a few minutes ago this bristly crazy thing right <laughs> If you burn bears with a torch, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You burn it, it's all black, right? You gotta brush that soot off before you put a final finish. This technique in this way is really putting a strain on my shoulder, my elbows, my wrist, to just, I mean, if you're a chainsaw carver, you're already beating yourself up quite a bit using a chainsaw. I mean, right, we're out here, we're doing this, you're cutting, you're moving logs yourself, you're, you're doing all this stuff already. Why beat yourself up more using a brush? Why not use something else and let the power tools do the work for you. That's the idea behind it. That's what I've been thinking. Like, man, my shoulders already hurt after a day of carving or my elbows hurt, you know, and now I got all these bears I just burnt and I gotta scrub everything down. Well, I was thinking in my head, why not have a brush that could be on a wheel? Now, the idea of the flap sander was in my head. You use the flap sander, but it takes some of the burn off on all those hard corners or edges or edge of the fur. And it, you don't want that to happen, what else can you do besides the brush or the flap sander? Why not come up with a brush like this? There's two ways though that I've been making them. This is with just some threaded rod, two nuts, two washers, and you clamp the piece in there. This way I have epoxied a bolt, actually a lag, lag bolt, and uh, put it right in so it's all one solid piece. We're going to be making one of these today and I'm going to walk you guys right through that right now. So first few things we're going to need to make this happen. You're going to need some epoxy. I'm just using JB Weld Clear two part five minute. Two part five minute epoxy unless you want the stuff that takes longer. A spray paint cap. All right see what the inside of this one looks like? Round. You don't want square or the one where you got to squeeze it to pop it off. You want one of these cheapo looking caps. You need a bolt. This one is actually, what do we got here? Five and a half, six inches long. You're gonna need something to mix your epoxy with. Now, most time you get a little stick, I like just using something a little bit longer. I've got myself a pair of gloves because I can't stand epoxy all over my hands, even though I've got a bunch on there now. You're gonna need some cutters, an X-Acto knife, a small bit, and some kind of Dremel tool that can carve, sand, or One other thing you're gonna need is some trimmer line for your weed, from your weed whacker or for your weed whacker. So the bit I'm gonna use is sized to that. I don't necessarily know what size bit this is. To be honest, it's not stamped on it. All I did was dug through my drawer after buying the string and found a bit that is, you know, pretty much the same size. It's almost exact. So that's, figure out your bit based on the size line you get. We gotta figure out how long you want those bristles to be that are gonna be on there. Now these ones are super long, so they can get into some tight spots. Now the only catch to having really long ones, a lot of times you end up whacking yourself if you're too close to the carving or you hit your hand, but they will get into those tighter spots that you can't quite get the head of the drill in. The ones I'm gonna be using today are gonna be right around, oh, six inches long. Now I'm gonna have a row of six inches long, then the second row I'm gonna be making will be about five, five and a half, and then there'll be a third row of six inches long again. You can take your cutters, take some line, get one cut to length, line them up. Now, these have not been exact. I'm not, for me, I'm not worried about it. Cut it, and just keep putting it in your hand. Cut it, not doing exact, just close. The six inch gives you a close mark. Every now and then, you know, once you get a handful, maybe measure the next one, see how close you are. 
does take a few minutes. It's why I'm, I've got most of mine already done here. So I'm bringing you guys in even closer because I want you to be able to see what we got going on. We got all our strings, move those to the side. We got the smaller strings, keep those separate. I'm gonna grab our cap. Now the easiest way I have found to drill the holes in the cap is to put it down like this. Take your drill off the side of the bench and go through and drill your holes. If you do it this way, you have a tough time lining them up as this thing keeps squishing down on itself and from the weight of your hand and whatnot. So just like that, cap down. I'm starting near the bottom of the cap, going through the first layer. Then you come to that second layer. You wanna go straight through that as well. Keeping your bit as straight as possible. You guys see that? So now you're gonna make those holes. There, you guys can also see how low that is. I'm not giving you exact measurements. I mean, this thing isn't gonna be perfect. You're just gonna eyeball it. See how low that is? We're gonna go all the way around. So this is the pattern we're gonna make all the way around. I'm gonna do the first row all the way around, the second row, and then the third, so that they alternate. We've gotta carve out the center of these real quick. Sometimes those holes will line up with those four fins I talked about on the inside. We need to get rid of those fins before we start the holes. So take a Dremel tool with something you can sand or cut with, get in there and just carve whoop, carve those out and then get those holes drilled. Even though that was in high speed, that part really only takes a few seconds. It's quick. Cut those out. Don't Make sure you don't cut through that outer wall at all though, or the inner wall. Um, as you get sanding, if you get a little too aggressive, you can go right through that plastic. And if you cut through that outer wall, your epoxy is going to pour out all over. Take this thing in high speed now and get all these holes drilled. Well, that was fun. After all those holes are drilled, now you want to take that X-Acto knife and scrape around the inside a little bit and just kind of remove all that, I don't know, that plastic that's just sort of sticking out in there all over. All right, so there's all my holes drilled. Also, you guys might be noticing these cool little things in here. Family got me some AirPods for Father's Day. Thank you, guys. These things are working great, so I could just talk to you guys, be hands-free, not worried about a microphone that can and can't hear me half the time. So I think these are going to come in really handy. I'll try to put a link below for them if you guys want to check them out. Also, everything we're using here, minus maybe the cap, I'll try to have links to Amazon where you guys can go and purchase, you know, whatever it is we're using, whether it'll be the exact same thing or something similar. Any purchases you guys make through that Amazon account helps support this channel, helps it grow, and help me get that much closer to making videos full time. It's time to put all those wire deals in there. Putting the wires in again can be a little time consuming and can be a little frustrating. I've got my short wires and my long wires separated. The first thing you wanna do is start with the holes on the bottom, then go to the second row, then go to the third row. Where your X-Acto knife comes in handy. I know this whole thing is kind of time consuming, but it's gonna help out pay off down the road. Hit those ends off just a little bit. You'll know what I mean when you're looking at that up close. You'll go, oh yeah, it's kind of flat. Clip the end off real quick. Put it in the hole. Line it up with another hole for that second one. Again, it's not always super easy. And when you look in there, there's a little dot. Injection mold of the plastic, there's a little dot usually in the center of those caps. I push them in till about that dot. So it looks like this. As you guys can see, putting these in can be time consuming. Sometimes you gotta re-drill a hole because it was off a little. What I'm gonna do is just jump ahead to where all these are in and we're ready for epoxy. I've got all my pieces in there finally. You can see how they all bend different ways and I said, hey, let's make them all go the same way. I'm not messing around with that. What I am gonna do though is kind of lay it flat and just try to get everything so it's flat and not twisted up or down. I don't care if it's twisted this way or this way. I was thinking this one, they're all the same way. The other one, they're all the same way. So let's see how they work when they're all twisted this way, you know, crisscrossing and wherever the heck they want to be. Now, if you've gotten this far, you'll notice the center is just this crazy nest of like crisscrossing pieces, right? 
All your outside holes should be filled though. Next, it's gonna be time for the epoxy and to get the bolt in. First thing I like to do is take this bolt head and kind of work it down in. Now, as you get going, you'll see that some of those pieces are gonna push out and move around and get all weird on you, and that's fine. You're working your way down until you get to about the first layer. That first layer, you don't wanna go past. You want the first layer to kind of keep the bolt up from hitting the bottom of the paint cap. At that point, I'm gonna pull it back out. Now that I've moved some of these out of the way and kind of rearranged them just a little. For the epoxy, I like to use the little plastic container it comes in, the packaging, to mix. Because then you can kind of pull it into the corner and sort of scoop it out and put it in. So just this plastic I'll be saving. I know it is like a little mixing container on top, so you can use that. Or you can use the part where the epoxy actually sits in down in here. That's where I'll be mixing mine up. Now this will end up being fairly thick and it says it'll cure in five minutes. It really, it is gonna take about 15 or 20 total before you can start to use this thing. I know I let mine sit, I think at least 20 minutes before I went and started using it. So you might wanna give it that just so everything can uh, set up. So we're gonna start getting this first one's all mixed and I'm putting it into the center hole. That's the first spot I wanna start kind of filling cause I wanna be able to get that um, bolt in there and start getting it set in place. So let's get the bolt in and now start pushing all of the wires back into place. Oh yeah, good times. I'm gonna start mixing the second little batch. Again, I'm just filling that center hole now that my epoxy is mixed as the first place I want to uh, start curing and start setting up so that bolt will hold. Once that's full, I'm just scraping the rest of it in the surrounding area. That's setting up pretty good. Every once in a while, I'm kind of just bending it over where it needs to be because it's not fully cured yet. And there's still tons of room to put more epoxy in. And that's what I'll end up doing as we uh, continue to, to fill it here. Guys, all the epoxy is mixed and in, and it's starting to set up. I can feel quite a bit of heat coming off this as the amount of epoxy, I mean, it's probably like that thick, is mixed and curing. So at this time, you know, I'm probably gonna work on something else while this just cures. And when we get back, I'll show you guys how to trim down that cap and make this thing looking a little bit neater. And we'll throw it in the drill and uh, give it a go. All of our epoxy should be cured. Good solid chunk. These are all solid in there. Um, the epoxy really does a great job holding that all together. The bolt ended up being pretty, pretty vertical, which is a plus. So what we gotta do is trim this thing down. You're gonna need an X-Acto knife. Be, be safe. Don't go cutting your finger off or slicing yourself wide open. What I end up doing is uh, using the X-Acto knife kind of like I'm gonna peel a potato. The first thing I do is kind of just get it in to the plastic and then I'm just gonna work my way around now you guys do this however you're comfortable doing this if you end up making this thing if you're able to look at it like this though and you're able to look down in you can see the blade through the plastic and you just kind of guide it around now again you got to do whatever you're comfortable and whatever keeps you safe cut this ring off Just like that. Earlier I was able to knock out a little bear and hit him with the torch. Due to the sun being gone and it being, well, nighttime, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put him in my bench vise here. And uh, we'll hit him real quick with this. And you guys can see how it works. That's actually working perfectly. It's getting that black layer off bringing it down to just the brown burnt wood just so you guys can see this is the brown burnt wood this is where you still got that charring on there from burning it and normally this would be all black but just for the purpose and time of the video see the dark black we got in there basically this is what we want this brown color once you put a clear coat on it it will actually darken right up nicely um that's 
just kind of what ends up happening. But I'm going to get this thing done and then you guys can get a closer look at it. So you guys can see we've got all that black charring off on the top half. The lower half still has some, but you guys see the difference there? The whole point is to just remove the charring and not any wood. That's what I'm using it for at this point. I'm not using it as an actual sander per se, because I don't want to remove any wood or the actual burn color. I just want that black charred soot to be removed so it's ready for clear coat. Remember, we're doing this to save our shoulders, our elbows, and our wrists from constantly brushing carvings down. Um, as, as well as this has worked on this little carving, I think it's going to perform great on something better. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that in one of my next videos. I'll do a carving and uh, we'll be burning it more than likely and using this to uh, remove that charring from the torch. Well guys, that's pretty much it. I do realize that this is time consuming to create this you know, the sander of sorts or whatever you want to call it, a wire wheel. Now you could go out and just get a wire wheel of your own. I found some at Harbor Freight, but the bristles are not as long and they seem to be a lot stiffer where they really attack the wood and not just the charring. I haven't seen anything online that would be able to have the reach as this, where you can really get into those tight part parts of your carving or even the reach of the bristles. So just the bristles could get in somewhere that's in a real tight wedge or something. So creating my own to fit custom pieces in my mind is way better than buying multiple ones and none of them being able to do exactly what I need. So, you know, spending maybe an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to make this tool on top of 25 bucks to me is worth it. If you guys have any questions on this thing, please feel free to ask. This is just something I was thinking of because I'm tired of my elbows and shoulders hurting after scrubbing down a ton of bears. And I thought there's got to be an easier way, so I'm going to make my own. I haven't seen anybody else make something like this. I do understand that there are bristle brushes out there and bristle wheels and things. I get it. You know, that's obviously where the idea came from. Well, guys, that's really going to wrap it up for this video. I hope it was uh, informational to a new tool that you could potentially make for your carvings. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you really enjoy this channel and you wanna help support it and help me get that much closer to making more videos and doing videos full time and carving full time, then check out my Patreon account. I got a link below in the description. You guys can hit that link, follow it to my Patreon page, and it gives you guys that opportunity to help support this channel financially. So I thank you guys for all your support. I thank you for the views and the shares. As always, feel free to share my video. Views are great. New subscribers are awesome. So that stuff's always welcome. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.